So Brandon, thanks for sharing that. I actually did not hear Brandon's side of the story, which I'm happy to hear that because um, we're going to go back to that. I'm going to share my side of the story, how we connected, because we're talking about the spiritual way to do business today, and uh, it fits in perfectly into my talk. And when I was tapping in, as soon as Brandon asked me to start to speak here. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I started connecting with Spirit and I start downloading information of what I need to share. So basically, this talk has kind of been running in my head for two weeks now, three weeks now. I forgot exactly when we planned this. Um, and every single time, I, it kind of like runs through my head. It's like a different version. So I never really know what's going to come out the day of. Um, but Spirit definitely wanted me to touch upon that, on how we met and how everything connects into what we're talking about today. So first off, um, I, two weeks ago I gave birth. This is my baby. And this is a really big deal for me. I know a lot, there's a lot of moms in here, right? Can I just see a show of hands of how many moms we do have in here? Okay, so quite a lot. I think we should probably have a clap for you guys too, right? Um, so I was pregnant with this baby for 10 years. So for those of you who have had babies, can you imagine being holding on to your baby, having your baby incubate for 10 years? Can you imagine maybe the tension that comes along with that, the frustration, the when, when's it going to happen? maybe trying to make it happen sometimes, and then when it's finally ready to, when you're finally ready to give birth to it, then it happens easily, effortlessly, and quickly. So this is the story that I'm going to take you into tonight. Um, again, it felt like it was very important for me to share with you guys because this is the spiritual way of doing business, that you give birth to projects when they're ready to be given birth to, when spirit says it is time, not when you say it's time. So um, before we go into that, let's talk about the hard way of doing business, all right? Now this is something that probably everybody here is familiar with, but it's really important that we cover this so you have something to compare it to. Um, can somebody, anyone point out, what do you think is the hard way of doing business? What would be like an activity that would be the hard way? I talk to the audience, you guys talk back. Just yell it out. We're very informal here. You guys don't know what the hard, what, what a hard, what would be something, okay. What would be something that is something that you're being, that you're told that you have to do in business in order to be successful? Yes. Networking, ding, 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 front row right there, three in, she's right, networking. Oh, in the work, back. Work uh, very long hours. Long hours, good, yes. Okay, by other people you mean? What to do, right. Social media. Social media. Sell, calls. Sell, cold calls, right, okay. So any time that you're doing something that you don't really want to be doing, that would be considered the hard way to do business. But we are so programmed into doing things a certain way, what we're told. I didn't use me. So every time you know, you're told you have to be on Facebook, you're told you have to be on Twitter, you're told you have to come to networking events like this, you're told you have to get a table, no offense to those of you who got a table. You're, you're told to hand out, hand out cards. You're told to follow up with those cards. It's a lot of hard work. Now, the way that I met Brandon and the way that I connected with you guys tonight is by doing really absolutely nothing. I was wearing my sweatpants. I happened to just wake up from a nap. I decided to go to the library. I had to get a book from my mom. Oh, actually, I'm being told to rewind the tape. Let me put down my baby right here. I need to tell you the story of how, what led up to this, okay? I used to do business the hard way. I used to hustle, you know? We're, we're told to hustle hard, especially in this area, right? We're, we're right by New York. A lot of you guys maybe work in New York, and you're hustle, hustle, hustle. Get that money, get that money. Make the contacts. Go, 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 go. Follow up, right? And you do that stuff, and you exhaust yourself. 
Well, I used to be like that because I grew up in this area and I have the same programming as you guys from the time that we're young. We are indoctrinated into ways to think, into ways to be in this world. And a lot of that is that we need to be doing hard. I'll move over here. I feel like you can't see me. I see you. So I was brought up the same way, and I used to work really hard. Now, um, this book is the transition that I made. In 2004, this starts off that I was working really hard to find love doing everything that people traditionally do to find love. You go online, you go to um, dating uh, events, singles events, and you do all of that, but please match me up to your friends. So I started off doing that. Um, and I was a dating coach at the time. I've been in this love field for a really long time. It's my, um, it's my life's work, and it's changed over the course. But through this journey, that's when Spirit stepped in and taught me this easier way to find love. And then over through the years, I ended up translating sort of the principles that Spirit taught me along the way into my life, into my relationships, into my business. And this is exactly how I live life now. Easy, just being, being a certain way rather than doing, rather than hustling hard. And over the years, I let go of all these other things that I was told I had to do. I had to work hard in clearing my programming. That's the only place where I work hard, is in my healing work. In 2004 is when I teamed up with a spiritual teacher. I started working with a really good healer. And under their wing, they started taking me through clearing this programming from my mind of things that I thought I had to do, and instead connecting with who I really was. Because when you connect with really who you are, you shine, you glow, you sparkle, you naturally attract people to you who are on the same wavelength that are going to hook you up with really good opportunities. So let me start back in the story because I'm rewinding the tape before I met Brandon because there's a lot more to that story. I was living in South Florida for four years. I went to graduate school there. Still kind of a little bit of a hustle bustle when I went back to um, to get my master's. I am trained as a therapist, a marriage and family therapist. I don't use it. I don't work as a therapist. I work as a healer because I find that that um, has been much more effective in clearing and healing people's wounds, my own wounds. We all have childhood wounds. From the minute that you're born, you start getting wounded. Um, and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that. The pro it has to do with the programming of how we're taught, of how you should be in this world, rather than what is really the truth of how to manifest and how to be in the world and to, to really get everything that you desire that's in your heart. So I was living in South Florida, and I knew that my time was up there. For a year, Spirit was telling me that I should pack up and I should sell off my stuff, and I should start donating my stuff, and I should get ready to leave. And this was a year that I was pretty much living with boxes and less and less furniture around me because I knew that I was moving. Now keep in mind, I didn't know where I was going. There's no way in hell I thought I was coming back here. And I just knew, get ready. Because again, I, over these years, over these 10 years, I have developed a, a deep enough relationship with Spirit that they're my best friend. I speak to them all the time. They're always there with me. And I listen when they speak. Again, this is through many years of healing. It's not like just automatically these gifts turn on. A lot of all my gifts opened up when I went through healing myself. Um, I never knew that I was psychic. I knew I had like little intuitions about things. But I never knew that I would be at the level that I'm at now. It really amazes me. So I was living in boxes and with boxes. And people would come and, you know, my parents would visit. And they'd be like, Blair, what are you doing? Why are you all packed up? Where are you going? You know? Because, again, they're living very much in the old school way of thinking. So um, time, the clock was ticking. And I knew I was not renewing my lease. And I was all packed up and ready to go. And I kept on saying to Spirit, where should I go? Where am I going? What is the opportunity that's coming for me? Because I have been manifesting and creating and patiently waiting for this new opportunity to come into my life. I was like, where is it? I need it now. Come on. i got to move out. And it was already like last minute. And they were guiding me that I had to go home, that 
I had to clear up some final stuff, clear up some final karma, tie up some loose ends with my family. Because while I was going over um, the last four years, I've been on and off estranged from my parents and from my family members. Because again, the stuff that I work through, the stuff that I do is very deep um, karma healing, childhood healing. Because until you clear all that stuff, you're going to be living a life that you have been programmed to live rather than living a life that's truly in creation. Truly what you desire, not what you have been taught to desire. And again, it's, it's, it's deep stuff that you can't just like figure out on your own. It's, it, 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 unveils, it unveils itself in phases. So I did not want to go home. But I had nowhere else to go, and there was nowhere really else I wanted to go because I just wanted this opportunity that was supposed to, that I've been waiting, that I was getting signs for, that was coming my way, and I did not want to go home. But I didn't have that much money in my bank account, so there really was, and I also did not want to be living on the road for an indefinite amount of time until this opportunity came into my life. So Spirit kept on saying to me, Blair, go home. So finally I gave in, and I said, I'll go, and I kind of um, stepped aside from my ego, which was a really big deal as far as going back, because again, I wasn't really so much on speaking terms with my family members to go give them a call to say, hey, I'm, I'm guided to come home. I said it in different ways because they're not um, spiritual or anything. But I decided to go home. Now, I'm gonna pause here for a second because when spirit wants you to do something, they're gonna limit certain resources in your life. So if I had tens of thousands of dollars in my bank account, I would be touring around the world doing who knows whatever, I wouldn't be going home. Does that make sense? You guys get it? Like, in a way, I was kind of forced to go home because I didn't know when this opportunity was gonna come home for, come for me, and I didn't want to be panicked somewhere on vacation um, when I was low on funds, I thought it would be wiser just to go home like Spirit said. So I went home, I was hanging out there, and um, just being open to the possibilities of what might open to me. And one day, I went to the library to actually look up and get a book from my mom, because I'm, again, I'm just kind of hanging out at home doing energy work on the family, on myself, and waiting for this opportunity. And when I was at the library, I happened to turn away from the computer and this little kid came running over to me, fell into my lap, started hugging my lap, and um, that's nothing so different for me because I have a connection with kids, but when I looked into this kid's eyes, I said, oh my God, this kid's a crystal child, which um, it, I'm not going to go into details with that unless somebody asks a question later on, maybe we'll have time for questions, but there are very special kids that are coming into this world to help shift and transform humanity because um, it is time for uh, humanity to evolve and for consciousness to rise. And that's part of my mission too, I'm an indigo. And the next wave after me is crystal children. So when this gift opened up for me, I also developed the gift that I'm able to recognize it in other people. I'm able to recognize the same vibration. We vibrate at different, um, a different level, uh, we have a different vibration than other people. Again, it's kind of off topic if somebody asks a question. And if you're interested in it, feel free to write it down. You guys can Google it and do some study on your own what that is. So when I see a child like this, and I'm totally enchanted by them because they are just incredible kids, um, I needed to tell his mom that she had a crystal child because I think it's a major blessing. And her kids started running around and she was running after her, uh, running after him. And when, um, she, when she was running after this one child, her two other kids ran, came over to me and I was saying to her, you know, you have a crystal child. And she was like, what is that? Whatever. And uh, well, she wasn't saying whatever, but you know, I'm like, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> and I started explaining to her a little bit. And then I looked at the other two kids that were standing around me. By now, all three of them were standing around me. And I said, oh my god, all three of your kids are crystal kids. And I was just, to me, this is something that's really exciting to me at this time. It's something that I really enjoy talking about and learning about and being around. So that was my reason for speaking with her. I was not there for business. I was wearing my sweats. Like I said, I was just taking a nap. 
And she happened to say, I have a women's networking group. Why don't you come on this Tuesday? And that's the next step. So again, another pause in the story. When you're doing the spiritual way to do business, you are given step one. Then once you do step one, you're given step two. And then it's the next step is revealed to you. So again, if we're contrasting this to the, the typical way of doing business or the hard way of doing business, is you have a plan, right? You want to have a business plan. You want to have like a whole marketing plan. You have X, Y, and Z to do. It's a lot of mental work. Whereas when you're doing the easy way, you're just in your heart and you're just being a certain way. You're just being present. That is what I do or I practice. That is my practice these days, just being present. And then when spirit tells me to do something, then that's when I do it. I don't have a certain protocol that I have to do X, Y, and Z. I have removed, for the most part, I still have that operating sometimes, the pressure that I have to do certain kind of marketing or business things. But that is where I do the work on it. So again, even though I call it the easy way to do business, some might consider it the hard way because you're doing a lot of internal work. You're doing a lot of management of your energy, of your thoughts. You're doing a lot of clearing and healing of that. And again, this is when I go back to go work with my healers because I have my own healers um, that I turn to if I can't heal something myself. So... The story goes on like this. I went to the networking event. Before the networking event, she said she had emailed me, um, hey, why don't you speak at the event? I said, okay, that's a good idea. She said, well, what topic? You know, maybe it'll come out tonight. Maybe we'll figure it out. I said, yeah, that's fine. It usually does. And again, I went to the networking event, and towards the end of the event, she started talking about my Mary Blair website, and she said, why don't you tell everybody how it went viral? We're going to talk about that how it did go viral. And I said, you know what? That's what I'm going to talk about. There's, the, there's the, the, the topic right there. So again, you see step by step. I didn't have any of this planned out. Hey, I'm going to speak when I get home. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go there. I'm going to try to get a speaking gig. There's not that mental chatter going on of having that plan. I let God figure it out. I let God put the people in my life that are going to have me step up and have me do certain things wherever I am needed. Because at this point, I am a worker for God. That's where I'm here to do. I'm here to serve. I go wherever he wants me to. I help whoever wants me to help them. That's it. Other than that, I butt out. I mind my own business. I take walks in the woods a lot. That's it. I hang out with my dog and I take lots of naps. Seriously, that's it. So, um... We, we decided to do the event, and again, she like she shared, coincidentally, she picked my birthday, which I had a feeling about that. Now, when I was living up here before I was in South Florida, I was an event planner for seven years in New York City. I ran an event planning company, and I was really good at it, but it was not necessarily my life calling. It was a safe position for me. It was where I hid. I knew I was supposed to be doing this, and I was doing it on the side, but for a really long time, I was hiding. It was safer for me to train other people to do their job, even though I figured out their whole job on what they were going to teach. And Because um, I, held, I held singles classes, I held couples classes, I did sexuality classes. And even though I was teaching the instructors what to teach, um, I was always in the back. It was safer for me to organize it all. So I come here. And I started trying to plan this event with Brandon. I was butting in. And Spirit was yelling at me, Blair, you have been praying for someone to plan the events for you, for you to not plan events anymore. You have been praying for someone to promote events for you. You did not want to promote events anymore. Your wish is granted. Would you butt out? And I couldn't because that was the safe position for me to plan, to organize, because again, I, it comes so easily to me, I've been doing it for so many years, and again, it was the safe position for me. So after a couple of days, I finally listened to Spirit, and I said, fine. And I wrote her an email, said, I'm butting out, you guys are doing a good job, I'm gonna be the love guru, because 
because that's what I'm supposed to do right now. That's what I've been praying about. I've been wanting to just focus on my stuff and not the planning and promoting, because I was even doing that in Florida, planning and promoting my own events. So as soon as I stepped aside, again, keep in mind here, you see how each step is revealed. See how this relates in your life. See how you can maybe change your life around a little bit, that you are sitting in silence a little bit more, listening to spirit a little bit more, rather than trying to figure it out and do, do, do yourself. So as soon as I stepped aside and let um, them take over planning, because after all, it is their event, what was I doing but in any way? I was able to hear that spirit said, put your book out. It is time for you to put your book out. Because I was hearing little sprinklings of this, but I was ignoring it. Spirit was telling me, Blair, your Mary Blair book is ready to go. Why don't you get it ready? You should share that story. And I said, self-publish. Ugh, I don't want to do that. Because I had a vision for the longest time that I was going to have printed up by a publisher. And over the years, I have had um, agents interested, but things weren't right. It wasn't the right time. Um, it wasn't the right relationship, and again, in the end, it wasn't the right time. So things didn't work out, but I just figured down the line that I would go after an agent again, and then they would go publish the book for me. So I fought with Spirit for a couple of days about this, that I did not want to publish it myself, that it, I don't know, it's not ready, and I need somebody to review it for me, and they said, Blair, you have been working on this book on and off for how many years? It's ready, get it ready for the event that you're going to. And then I started a little debate with them about, hey, um, this is not a love event, why are you having me do this book for a business event? So you can see how, again, the struggle is going back and forth, but this is a learning that we, that we all go through, that we have to step aside and allow ourselves to surrender and to trust on how spirit is guiding us. So finally, and this was going on for two or three days, it wasn't happening so long, so it doesn't take me that long to like, fine, I give in, I follow what you're saying. So then I started working on my book, because I was like, it's gonna be too expensive to print, and I had like every, I was like, I, I fight with my guides and with spirit again, whatever you wanna call it, God, the universe, nature. I do a lot of back and forth with him, or them, um, my spirit family, but, I gave in, and in the end, it was really easy to put the book together, to get it ready, to get it out there. And here it is. And there were little things along the way as far as like, uh, when I finally was done proofing it a million times, I submitted it to get printed up, and it said it was gonna be here July 15th. So then I was a little nervous, is it gonna get here on time, whatever, and Spirit can say, yes, it'll get there on time. And it's here on time. So as you see, again, it's step by step by step that opens up. So now I have been guided that it's time for me to leave again. I'm all packed up, and I am planning on leaving Sunday. I have not been told where I'm going just yet, which has been a little bit stressful, and I know it's, it's not the norm, but uh, I am leaving. It is time for me to go. I finished clearing up final uh, tie-ups and karma with my family. I'm completely free of that. And I'm ready to step into the life of my dreams and to step into a life of total creation and to step into the life that I have been dreaming about my whole life. So let's go back to this for a second here. Um, the question to you is, how much are you going to put an effort into your business to try to make it work along the way? Or how much are you going to be able to let spirit guide you? That you're going to trust that you're meant to do certain things in this world and that eventually it'll come around. I didn't know when this book was going to come around. I didn't know when things were going to pan out. But this was, I had, the stuff that is coming true for me now this has been 20 years of holding on to a dream. Over 20, it's actually over 20 years. So how long are you going to hold on to a dream that you know of something that you love in your heart, 
Or when are you going to kind of like sell out? You know, people use that term that, you know, um, it's, it's in a lot of entertainment, like they sold their soul to the devil, or like you sell out. And what that means to me, my understanding of that, is that basically people stopped giving into, stopped believing in their dream, and instead started, stopped, stopped believing in God making their dream happen, and then instead turned to man to make it happen. Because if somebody says, well, maybe you should do this with your career, and you start altering it because maybe you're not making so much money doing what you're doing, maybe it's harder than what you're doing, how long are you going to hold on to that thing that's really in your heart? 